Hello again, Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games, back for more Monster Apocalypse, and this time, one of the newest monsters is a get to the game, Galamaxis. Our, our brilliant blue 09116. Took me a while to figure out how I was going to paint this guy. And I think I finally come across something, but... Galamaxis comes with the... Uh, uh, Megaton mashup set, which, outside of coming with this beast, has a way of uh, playing it solo or uh, two-player against the game itself, where two monsters go up against a super-powered monster. In terms of lore, Galamaxis is from the Necro Scourge faction, a destroyer agenda. He was in life. Uh, I've got to get a paper towel out. In life, Galamaxis was a member of the Draken Empire. Or Draken Armada, actually. A group of heroic space dragons with incredibly advanced technology who died fighting the planet eaters. Unfortunately, his body encountered the Necro Scourge, a nebula-sized cloud of nanites that rebuilds dead matter into a horrifying new form, so this is not necessarily what he may have looked like originally, but it's definitely what he looks like now. And whatever he was before, he no longer is. Given over completely to destructive impulses. In game, he's a brute. Oh, and in hyperform. So, um, in game, uh, it's what Munch, I think, giving him health for destroying units. Explosion on his blast attack with his essence draining nodules in the chest. And uh, uh, hyper mode, he gains two powerful actions. One lets him move, move his full speed a second time. The other gives him five power dice instantly. But every time he uses one of those actions in high perform, he also takes a point of damage. So for all this muscle, he is burning himself out, doing all this cool stuff. And if something is repelling the paint, it might be... I just missed a spot on the primer, I'm not certain, but I may have to do a second coat. I'm just going to get the bulk of it with this. I'm going to do other colors, obviously. The official color scheme is dominated by purple, to the extent that uh, uh, it's almost monochromatic, actually. but. Didn't particularly like that, so I'll come up with something that I uh, hope turns out at least halfway decent. This is definitely a cool model. Took me a while to figure it out, too, going so far as to stare at a vending machine full of skills at work for ideas while I was waiting to punch in. I took a look at uh, the Disney movie, The Black Hole, for inspiration as well. Going with the three aspects of undead, dragon, and space, thinking, hey, that might not be, that basically had off the look of the black hole might not be so bad, and uh, it gave me a slight nudge towards what I'm doing now, but not a huge one. And the black hole was made in the 80s and was Disney's original answer to Star Wars. Its second answer to Star Wars was just to buy the rights to Star Wars. And it's something. It's definitely interesting. It's also one of those movies where they started filming before the script was done, so it's got some oddities in it. And this is about the biggest brush I carry use. And 
given on what I have to uh, for choices on gripping, I'm going to have to just do part of it now and finish up later. So I'll do a little bit more of this on camera and then uh, go off camera for the rest. All right, I'm running a bit thin on paint here. So I'll go ahead and stop now and when I come back, I'll have this base coat complete. So back in a bit. All right, lemon yellow 09009. Decided I want some very bright colors on the interior of the mouth, so I'm overall going for a dark color scheme here. Overall, anyway. I'm going to go over the gums in the interior of the mouth here. With it, this will provide a contrast. It will sort of go along with the lighting effects I intend to do in a little bit. And now, it's been mentioned that the Necro Scourge may have been developed for peaceful humanitarian purposes. But maybe malfunctioning. As it stands, though, it's one of the biggest threats to the galaxy, possibly even greater than the planet eaters. And on that note, it's unknown if the Draken Armada, if their homeworld even exists. We know they were fighting the planet eaters. We know they have advanced technology and have taken to space. They have come to Earth to fight the planet eaters again. But the question is. Did they win uh, on their own home world, or did they lose? Okay, clean that out a little bit more. And actually, let's see here. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and do armor next. So for that, I'm going to take Ancient Bronze 09049. So, the dragon do wear clothing and armor. It's going to be a little bit on here. Just a bit. So, the official color scheme for Galamax is various shades of red and violet that are so similar to each other. So, I'm doing something. Again, something a little different. And I will definitely be playing around with my shading and highlighting on this armor here. So this particular color is normally what I use to shade uh, gold. And I don't have any Draken Armada figures yet, but I'm thinking strongly green flesh and gold armor. The official seem to be red flesh and green armor. I have a little, the water I've got in here is a little excessive, it seems. But I can work with that. I'm going to get the other four leg before I decide how far up the thigh I want to go with this. You know what? Let's see. I'm going to go all the way up to here, actually, now that I'm... Yeah, I'm going to go all the way up to here on this thigh armor. Get that little bit right there on the crotch. Gallimax was good very well have been wearing some kind of shirt before he was slain and mutated. 
or reanimate, I suppose, is the more accurate wording. I'll call this panel here armor. And then kind of stop about here. And again, a lot of this can be considered open to interpretation. So just keep that in mind. One trick is to just keep consistent with what you're going for. My computer is making bad noises. I'm going to keep going for now, though. And I'll stop and try to troubleshoot if I have to. I'm going to, yeah. So I'm going to assume that uh, Gallimaxis did have some kind of breastplate on, which has since been ripped off, blown away. To reveal his essence absorbing nodules in his chest. That was not some uh, delay in the system. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, that was just my brain dropping the clutch and forgetting what I was going to say. Okay. Alright, this is starting to act up again, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish this gold real quick. And then uh, see if I can't troubleshoot a little bit and come back. fibers weaving into it on the concept or on the official color scheme and concept art so I'm gonna go with that too so maybe he had armor Megan maybe he had a gorget as well neck armor would make sense to be fair So, I guess I'm moving on. All right. Now, last base coat, Deep Red 09002, and I might need to take multiple passes at this to get it done, based mostly on uh, positioning of the model. This is going to be the keratin and the bone skeletal system. Go ahead and start on the skull here and pick out this spine. It should be a little tricky because of the cosmic ramjets. We 
which will also get some uh, this. the brush moist but not overly wet. That's a little too much water. I'm going to stop about there for now and get the other side of it before I finish up the tail. Harsh lighting here makes it a little difficult to see, so just bear with me here. That is a little thick. Let's get a little water in there to kind of spread it around. So I'm definitely only going to, all right, so I'm only going to be able to do part of this now, and I'll have to do the rest later. So just like with the body, I'll just do part of this now and do the rest of this off camera, just for the sake of saving some time. And I'm going all the way up to the spear-bladed tip of the tail. Too much, too, not enough water, too much paint. Try to spread that out again. Get a little water in the brush and just go along and dilute. Cosmic ratchets by mistake, so using the old trick of diluting the plant paint with water and soaking up. Well, uh, acrylics are not very forgiving. You do have some time to fix mistakes if you catch them quickly enough. Of course, it's also easy to just paint over them as well. A bit too much paint, not enough water right there. Again, I gotta watch that. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the spear tip tail here. And I will go ahead and grip by the cosmic ramjets now and get the acute appendages. See how described on the card. In other words, scythe like bladed forelimbs. I'm just making a judgment call as to where I say the flesh part ends and the keratin or bone part begins. A little more paint.
All right, I'm going to call it good for filming after I finish this arm, but off camera, I'll get the other arm, the toenails, these teeth around the chest, the teeth in the mouth, and some details on the cosmic ramjets themselves. So, go ahead and finish that up off camera. When I come back, I can start shading. All right. The base coatings are is done. There's still some of this uh, red drying, so I'm gonna start shading. Uh, let's gotta think carefully. All right. All right. Okay. I'm gonna take sparkling amethyst zero nine one zero five and shade the gold with that. It'll give it a different. Essentially, I'm going for a corroded, corrupted-looking effect on the metal. So, and this is a metallic violet. Okay. I think I'm only going to be able to actually shade one color at a time, unfortunately, and that is what it is. So, thinning it to Thinning the paint with one part water to one part paint. Do a wash. And going over the base coats along the neck here. So, again, a pretty dark color scheme with just very bright lighting effects. And I'm going to do something, try something I've not tried before on the essence absorbing nodules in the chest. Now when I get to the red, which will probably be the next one I shade, I'll only be able to do uh, bits and pieces at a time. So I'll do part on camera, part off, just to save time here. And keeping my brush nice and wet during all this and letting the paint flow into the recessed areas. Kind of gripping by the ramjets. Which may or may not have been part of his original anatomy, but... I like to think that when Gallimaxus' body encountered the Necro Scourge, that he had a momentary, or that he momentarily regained consciousness and who he was and screamed in agony as he realized what was being done to him, being completely changed from whatever he was to what he is. I think based on what the rest of the Draken Armada, I keep forgetting if it's Armada or Empire, but whatever. I'll get it memorized once I get some of their models. But based on what the rest of the dragon look like, I really don't think, uh, I really think Galanaxis' appearance was, was um, radically altered by the Necro Scourge Nanites. This is looking pretty good so far on this. I think this is going to get pretty close to the way I imagined it in my head. dry completely and then move on to the red. Okay, time to shade the red. Red brick 09001. So I won't be able to get part of this on camera just because of choices I have for gripping the model. So I'll do what I can on camera, then when I have to switch grips, I'll just get the rest off camera. But this will give you the idea of what you need to do. Again, thinning it out. So for the teeth, I'm just trying to keep the bare minimum of paint I need in the brush. Because I really want to avoid getting the 
gums and the mouth. Because I want the gums, tongue, and mouth lit up to tie it to the lighting I intend to do. Then these teeth on the chest. While three of these nodules, these essence training nodules, are particularly prominent, it looks like there's about eight of them. Four, five, six, so probably eight up. So three, four, six barely visible, so I'm assuming maybe seven or eight up in there, but it's essentially a cancerous looking cluster. And this kind of also brings to mind the tyrants from Resident Evil. And I suppose a bit the broken mutations. I have I've not played the new ones, but I've played the original Resident Evils. Okay, I'll go ahead and do the uh, spine here next, but avoid doing the tip of the tail right this minute. Just gonna let that flow. If it blends in a bit. That's okay. For almost uh, typically when you see something created from uh, reanimate from dead flesh, it doesn't really look all that neat and clean most of the time. I'm sort of thinking maybe I should have done these ribs in the boat as well, but uh, I'm going to leave it as is. Okay. Flip them around, get the other side careful like. Okay. And the official version of Gallimaxis has pink kind of purple lighting. I did initially really like the idea of pink lighting, but uh, I've changed my mind and I actually found it was kind of holding me back from what I, it's kind of holding me back, focusing on that aspect. the cosmic ram jets and go ahead and get the toes camera is starting to conk out on me for crying out loud. So, okay. The plan nice. <sighs> I work with what I've got. So the arm blades. And based on the kind of seam between the bicep, between the fore and the blade, these might have either been originally some kind of sortie held or just something, or gauntlets, but it could easily also be just a component the Necro Scourge added when it reanimated him. Let's try to keep this in camera. Doing this all shaded for now, but there will be lighting effects on the blades. So while the lighting effects will be dead last, per usual. Okay. Now the tip of the tail. Well, 
that's an awkward grip, but I can work with it. All right, now I'll just have to shade the cosmic ramjets later when I can get a better grip. So I'm gonna come back in a bit to wrap up the shading here. Okay, Ritterlick Blue 09115. <laughs> It's going to be a little tricky, but I think I can get it all here without having to wait. Take it out again. I'm going to carefully start on the face and neck. Being careful to avoid nicking the metal in the throat or the teeth or gums here. Okay, now I can loosen up as I get the rest of the face. And one of these days I'll figure out why I keep whispering. There's no need to. Again, keeping my brush nice and wet. Hypothetically, could use a larger brush for this. I prefer the tighter control that this one's going to afford me right now. Now I'm stopping at the arms. I'm not going to do those yet. And I don't really want to touch the legs above the thighs here. For, or I don't want to do the legs below the thighs here, not for now anyway. Just going up to there on the cosmic ramjet for now. But overall, I'm just letting the paint flow where it wants to. But right now, I just want to get the uh, again the neck and back first here. This is just meticulous work, and that's all there is to it. The result, though, will be worth it. Start going along the tail now. My voice is kind of hoarse because I've been coughing up crap all day, mostly from the smoke and other chemical pollutants in the air. Mostly fire related, but uh, I work around a lot of chemicals at my day job that I really shouldn't be exposed to. It's negligent co workers I've been fighting for literally years just to clean up after himself, so don't have the pandemic, but if I start coughing, it's that. Thank you. 
Some of this is in deep shadow because of how severe my lighting is. Unfortunately, this lighting's a necessity to help the camera focus, which is still one of my biggest problems I've got with these videos, and one that I will still probably be trying to figure out a solution to for a while longer yet, but I will get there eventually. Again, being super careful where I grew up, I'm going to finish up the cosmic ramjets here. I'm going to get the interior. in between the uh, rib-like protrusions so it flows downward. This one, this side's trickier because the tail comes closer to it. There we go. I just wanted to make certain I got okay. So we're just going to have to be the trickier of those two. If that has a bit too much paint in it, I'm just gonna kind of backpedal some of that, soak some of it up with a brush, and try to clean it up just a bit. That's a bit better. That's better. I don't want I want these ribs to or rib-like structures to be visible. side. Again, I'm just keeping my brush super wet here. Actually, I may have misread what it says about the appendages. It looks like it's actually spelled accurate instead of acute. So that's me just misreading it. But still, big sword blades for arms now.
Okay. My computer is making bad noises, but it's still not acting up quite yet. I think I'm just about done with this one. Okay. Now I'm going to do the legs, finish those up before I get the arms. Going down here, being careful around the armor. Oh, and I just got some glue on the blade, so let's just take care of the paper towel. That should still be okay. I'm going to be doing some lag effects on my arms anyway. skin not to be red claws. Now I'm exclusively gripping by the blades both on the forearms and tail. It seems some of this has seeped into the armor. Well, I can work with that. I can work with that. Well that is severely scrapping so I'm going to just blot that out with the towel. I shouldn't be as concerned about shading the bottom of the feet since they're going to be uh, glued down, but I think this particular Gallimaxis may have been miscast somewhat because he doesn't exactly stand flush. It'll look fine when I got him glued to his base, but there will be just a little bit of one foot sort of visible. This is mostly a resin model, but the blade arms were metal. This tail is pretty solid, so I feel reasonably confident it's not going to snap off while I do this. Okay, that's got it. So now I'm going to let that dry completely. Go run a few errands while it does that. Maybe put a little more violet on the. Uh, maybe kind of touch up this knee here with a little more violet. You know what, it's fine. So yeah, I'm going to go run some errands now with this dry. When I come back, I'll finish up the shading and the proper lighting effects. Alright, I'm going to get some lighting effects primed and then hit the last of the shading. So, matte white. Need a fair bit on this guy. out these nodules and kind of get in between the teeth a bit. A bit. 
And if I nick the teeth on this a bit, that's all right. six of them. So I'm using about one and a half parts water to one part paint here. I'm going to get the innermost chamber on the cosmic ramjet here. Then just these, I think. Could be, I think these are meant to be vents too, but I think I'm just going to do these. I'm almost doing this one like a wash just because of the tail in the way. I think I just got my camera in there. All right. Okay. That's the tricky one. If this hits the red, that's okay. It'll help sell the illusion that it's glowing. You know what? I'm going to do these anyway. Change my mind. I'll do these vents here too. Let's start with the interior. Again, the, there's a lot of deep shadows right here. pretty wet during this. Not quite as thin as a wash, but pretty close to it. Then, okay. Let's see here. for the arms. On the other side. Right. Mirror. 
Okay, sunny yellow 09008 for the interior of the mouth. Get a little mixed up there. And one to one on the paint to water ratio. Inside, carefully go along the gums. Okay. All right. Once that light dries, we can start the lighting. So, back in a. Okay, for lighting, I'm going to go with lemon yellow 09009 for a start, but I'm going to get kind of fancy on it, particularly on the essence draining nodules. So, two to three. And that is a scam call, and that can just be ignored. So, as I was uh, saying, to three parts water to one part paint for a lighting effect. Overall, the key is for some of the white to be showing through when you're done. Now, very carefully, I'm going to come in here and get these first. Yeah, I've, I've been getting a lot of scam calls lately, and I'm really, really frustrated by it. Because I ask you, what is the point of having all these filters to make sure that only people you've got listed as you know them can call you? And these scammers get through anyway and try to, you know, take everything you've got. It I'm just makes me want to uh, take up computer programming solely so that I can make a special use virus that tracks these scammers to their point of origin and bricks their systems. So I guessed about right on the white. This will be a nice contrast between the overall dark color scheme. Being careful where I grab now because I don't want to nick anything by accident. Get the inside there. Go the eyes now. Generally speaking, I like to do just one. Well, not apocalypse. I like to do just one lighting effect for each model, just to show sort of a connection between their eyes and their power. If that makes sense, I think I said it in about the most awkward way possible. And again, I'm keeping my brush nice and wet during all this. A little more paint on that one. Now for the essence of the modules. I'm going to do something a little more extreme and start with fire orange 09006, but I'm still going to do it as a lighting effect. And, okay. So 
my system was conking out on me for a minute there, but we're okay. Kind of looks like he's got a big tumor in his chest. And by the time I'm done with it, I'm hoping I can make it look like this tumor is about to go supernova. Start with that. Uh oh, there goes a flyer. Just in the back in a bit. Okay, time to highlight in detail. So I'm going to take lemon yellow 09009 again. So my paper towel on the other side for dry brushing because it's getting pretty saturated. Now with this round of lemon yellow, I'm going to take a. Let's see what looks good. Probably this one here, some ragged and feathered. Straight paint my water. I'm gonna dab some of it up. I'm just gonna kind of staple it on here a bit. That looks pretty good. And while that dries, I'm gonna move on to the shading or no, highlighting. Cyan blue. Yep, cyan blue is around one seven. Clogged. It's okay. Paper clip. Mm -mm. He gets bald spots on his claws, but that's okay. I'll get it taken care of. So the cyan blue. Um, do I want to start with this? Actually, I'm going to start with matte white. I get all mixed up here. Just a bit of matte white. Ragged feathered brush and rubbing most of the paint out on the paper towel. No water, straight paint only. I'm just going to dry brush the inside of the mouth and kind of the gums here. Now, a different ragged feathered brush and uh, rub most of the paint out in the cyan blue and start highlighting that. Okay, I just nicked the eyes by mistake. I'll have to touch those up. So I'm focusing on the most readily visible surfaces only. In fact, I actually want to take a little bit of that uh, lemon yellow there. Just just gonna dab that on where I made that little mistake. That'll fix it up well enough. Without getting back into that blue. is readily visible.
Oh no! Okay, I lucked out there. I didn't intend to drop him like that. I just, just worn out. All right. Still got the frame right. structure at the end of this cosmic ramjet, which is just a fun word to say. Okay, that's about a lot of blue. Clean that out, and now I'm going to take Emerald green, zero nine one zero three. And this is metallic green. that to the armor. Giving the gold a corroded, corrupted look. this bionic bit in the throat. I think it's safe to say at this point Galamax is wholly biomechanical. Now Pearl White zero nine zero one zero zero. Somewhat the look in the outlook of the nose he's got. Now that looks explosive. Blood red 09003. I'm probably going to need two different brushes to do this proper. Start off with a smaller one. So just be able to just throw all of it. Put the claws on his legs. Uh. More refreshing is necessary. And again, my 
focus on what's readily visible. So I won't be getting the entirety of the uh, spine, specifically not the portion that's concealed by the ramjets. Definitely want to shine up the edge, especially where it looks bladed. Okay. Switch to something bigger for the rest. This should be okay. against any angles on those bone-like structures. Just one left. The accurate appendages. Might need a little more paint. That's right, but almost done. We'll see. We'll see how far I get. to the other big nasty blade arm. And that's it for painting. Got one more step, and I want to uh, give him a chance to dry first, so come back in a bit and we'll do I can wrap up. Alright, final step is to glue him to his base. I like to keep these in their protected plastic until the last minute, because when I get painting, the paint goes a flying. So, thick cyanoacrylate super glue. This is the bad stuff, or the good stuff, depending on your point of view. Point is, this stuff is, uh, well, A, it's clogged. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is stuff that can glue a brick to your ceiling, so... This can be a little problematic sometimes. Okay, it looks like it's clear now. Let's try that again. So my glue. This is the foot that's going to be clearly just solidly on the base. So we're just going to get a nice big dot there. 
and then this one's gonna be a little skewed, so just a bit there. Cap that. And I'm gonna get him centered the way I want. So kind of looking dead on at whatever his target's gonna be. Let that set for about oh, 20 seconds, so. thing I need to do, which I can't do on camera, is varnish him, since that involves an aerosol spray can. But there we go. Gallimaxis from the Necro Scourge faction. This is going to be the last video for a bit. I'm going to take a break, do some stuff, I'll paint some things I'm not going to record. When I come back, it'll either be Transformers Deep Cuts or uh, Warcaster Neo Mechanica. I haven't decided quite yet, so I'll be back in about a week. Until then, I am Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games, signing out.